Marco. Sean, are we there yet? We are. We're nearly there, and we have we have this really cool story. We get the best stories, I have to say. I know. Uh, There's a lot of. It's cool nothing stuff. to do with us. It's the people that that come on uh, have the best stories, and I'm, I, I I'm grateful. I think we're a good listener. We're good listeners listener. and maybe good amplifier too. So yeah, there it's always go. a good, I, I have learned most of the things that I know about cybersecurity doing podcasts with you or by myself, you know, as I don't have a background in cybersecurity, but really I learn always so much having this conversation and I'm very, very excited for this one. And there's, uh, there's a number of facets to cover when we start looking at uh, technology and business and, and protecting it and its data and, and the people behind that data and everything else. And uh, yeah, it, it starts with access and, and uh, maintaining who, who can do what, not just on-prem, but in the cloud. And we're going to talk a bit about that today with our good friend, Art Bogosian. How are you, Art? I'm great, Sean. Thank you for the opportunity you. to be here today. Yeah, it's good to, good to see you. And uh, yeah, we go back uh, a while. I think we, we did some stuff in uh, Pasadena, with some events, which were really fun. And uh, we got to meet you there. And, and yeah, just a uh, good community. And, and you're, you're a super cool dude. And I'm thrilled to have you on. So this is part of our uh, event coverage, uh, part of Black Hat uh, coverage that we're doing. And you're going to be in Las Vegas for a couple of days, and we wanted to catch up with you. We're going to do we're going to do a, a video recording on location with you there to dig deeper in, uh, into some of the stuff that you do at Brightif. But um, we wanted to kind of kick it off with uh, what we call the origin story. Why was Brightif formed? What was the catalyst behind it? What's your vision and your mission? That kind of stuff. And uh, let's first start with you, Art. So you've done a few things yourself over the past year. So what led, led you to Brightive to start off? Yeah, uh, this is always a, a fun story. And every time I tell this story, it seems like I remember something that I didn't remember before. So hopefully something that comes up this time that the world hasn't heard yet. <laughs> but uh, if uh, since, yeah, we go backward, I, I want to say probably 12, 13 years. Um, uh, and the company uh, that I had started then was... Um, different one called Advanced Technology Solutions, uh, Identity and Access Management Technology uh, so Solutions Company. And before that, I was with B Big Four, E&Y. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been in the identity space uh, quite a long time, it turns out, almost uh, 24, 23 years at least. Um, in, in its many advanced, shapes and forms, <laughs> the identity, yeah, identity space, yeah. It's been, it's been very exciting to to see this industry evolve uh, and where it is today. And um, part of that origin story is very um, very closely related to that background in identity space. And uh, our uh, first business, Advanced, was acquired in 2016 by Optiv Security, and uh, it was great. It's very exciting uh, to uh, you know to to get to that milestone. Um, you know, what was interesting at the time was also I'd, I'd already uh, um, tasted, let's just say, the, the, the entrepreneurial, you know, life and success. And uh, I, I knew I was definitely going to do another one. So yeah, uh, we're bitten by luckily, the entrepreneurial bug. <laughs> bug exactly. L luckily, my co-founders were in the same boat. And uh, so we really were um, thinking about how the world had changed at that point uh, from the technology evolution standpoint in general and uh, how uh, the emergence of public cloud technologies was changing the businesses um, so quickly. And for us, it was uh, really kind of thinking a few years down the road, a decade down the road, what was it going to look like and how would the world respond to uh, these massive, you know, shifts in in the tech stack, like going from data center to cloud, you know, cloud infrastructure and data and so on. And the question we're asking ourselves is, um, security is inevitably going to change. Identity uh, inevitably is going to change. What is it going to look like? How is this going to look? And how is it going to work to be able to support this kind of a very rapid change and transformation? And, you know, we had seen some very early signs and um, 
among our customers, uh, we had some very sort of forward looking and uh, cutting edge type of businesses that were already pushing the limits of existing IAM and security products in their cloud environments. Um, I remember this incident, in, uh, or I remember this episode when a CISO, uh, a very good friend of ours at a healthcare technology company said, hey, in just one month, I had two uh, access breaches in our AWS environment, API token and then the developer's role, developer's access is compromised. Like, um, this is kind of out of control. Um, and a lot of it was because they weren't using any of the existing products in the market, uh, not because they didn't have it, they had it, they just didn't want to, the, the cloud teams that is. So for us, it was like really worth digging more and understanding why, why is that the case? And came down to didn't, the existing products didn't support the way they operate the environment, like infrastructure as code type of uh, processes or DevOps, right? And so it was kind of a, a worth uh, more time and effort. So we, we dug more and we really kind of understood that this is, this is a problem that going to, is going to get even bigger and more complex as organizations also uh, mature and expand uh, across uh, new uh, cloud technologies. So it had to be addressed sort of ground up for that kind of a world and that kind of a, a reality. Uh, so we started building and we went right back to the uh, you know drawing board and started building. And, um, and it was a couple of things that was very clear from the beginning that, and it's, it's not such a light bulb uh, kind of a moment anymore, but it was a, I'm talking about 2016, 2017 at the time that, hey, you know, um, there's not gonna be a security perimeter in the cloud. So what is going to replace that? Um, how is uh, that security architecture going to incorporate the concept of identity? Because identity is essentially that the closest to a perimeter you have. So how do you build something around that? Not around the firewall anymore, right? That's, uh, that got us started and with a lot of great um, discussions with uh, some experts in the space, you know, some CISOs and CTOs, we eventually built what, uh, what it is today, right? It's a cloud privileged access uh, platform. Before we, we dive more into what this company does, I kind of cut a few of bits and pieces of what you said. Uh, with all the experience you have, you started more than one company. You guys, both you and Sean, has been in this industry for a long time. And what has changed from the way that you started this company compared with maybe what you thought you had in mind when you started the other one? And where I'm going with this is, nowadays we know that nothing is there forever. The best technology potentially, eventually, for sure, is gonna change. So before maybe it was like, hey, I, I invented the printing press, we're good. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> thinking the radio, the TV, the internet. So how is your methodology thinking has changed as a, as a company creator? Mm -hmm. um. You're not hinting on AI, are you, Marco? <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, I swear I didn't think <laughs> but, about it. Yes. For, maybe for the first time in e in a year, I haven't thought about it. But yeah, sure, you can. <laughs> but that, I threw that in just to spice things up a little bit because that is the the the, the constant change, right? Uh, it's it's yet another big disruptor. Right. But certainly, um, I think um, I, I think the 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 first thing that really kind of comes to mind here is once you've embraced that everything is going to change. Uh, you know, it gets a little bit easier from there on. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, you have to prepare yourself. You have to always think about what's going to change uh, down the road. Uh, and I think that's what the, the modern technologies need to, the companies that are building modern technologies needs to, to embrace, right? Um, I think for us specifically, um, there's, there's a lot of different sort of uh, forces at play, in, including AI is a, is a big, big, uh, big catalyst uh, to modernize the security security stack and security products, and there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there. Um, I think there's also something that you always have to sort of balance, especially when you're addressing uh, major sort of enterprise organizations' needs, 
you don't just forget everything that exists and run to the you know the newest and shiniest toy or whatever is in the market right you always have to sort of balance the perspective like what's new what's sort of that cutting engine at driving the innovation but what are what are the the, the big sort of um uh data risks or security risks that need to be protected today right now right so i think that's that's how how we think about where this technology will evolve where right of technology will, will evolve of course we we'll want to be sort of uh, at the uh, the cutting edge of the technology and the innovation, but without forgetting what our customers need today, um, right. that makes sense. Yeah, it's a it's a balancing act for sure. And I want I want to balance on the other uh, end of the the seesaw, um, kind of going to the the origin and the the initial founding. Because I mean, look, let's look at it. Yes, security technology security companies, technology companies bring stuff to market that's innovative and hopefully it solves a problem for an organization. But ultimately at the end of the day, an organization has a IT operations, security operations, a team that knows stuff. They know how to tweak, tweak and tune and config and manage and respond and all that. And a move to the cloud, we can talk about this in, in just the pure transformation from on-prem to the cloud that, that evolved over time, right? Some things moved as they were. Some things had to be tweaked as they moved. Some things had to be rebuilt. The cloud had to adapt to some of the old things that didn't just naturally move as well. And I think if we look at IAM and, uh, and privilege access management, I think the same thing could be said for that. So you, you kind of saw that the existing tools, you even said it, right? They, they may have covered some things, but not comfortably for the security teams and definitely not comfortably for guess who the cloud teams <laughs> right? and the team is building exactly. apps and, and running cloud ops, which is sometimes different than it ops and certainly doesn't always mean that security ops is included there as well. So talk to me a little bit about some of the thinking there and how you, how you saw that shift and the need for that. It's probably based on experience, but that, tell me, tell me a little bit about how, all that came together for what you ultimately built and continue to, to build at Brightif. Mm -hmm. No, that's a that's a that's a great question, uh, Sean. I think um, uh, anyone who's been in the security space, uh, you know, a decade or two, uh, always seen that sort of tension between the you know security teams and the rest of the organization, the IT team, the business, and so on, because obviously security wants to secure the environment, which comes at a cost of, you know, performance, operation, and so on. Um, I personally felt really kind of um, conflicted about that. I, I, I always thought, like, why is it that way? Why can't it be both? Like, why can't the board be perfect, if you will, right? And that's why, that's why I do what I do, right? <laughs> I have that perfect world in mind. But, I mean, to bring it back to sort of the beginning of how we started approaching this problem is, First and foremost, to understand why should there be a conflict uh, in the in the world of identity, especially privileged access management. Obviously, privileges are exclusive and they shouldn't be given to anyone. But could you, could they be given to people who always need it in a way that it doesn't create friction, in a way that it doesn't get in their way of just doing their everyday jobs, right? And it felt like when we dug in research, that was the first thing we really tried to understand: why does it have to get so difficult or cause friction. Can we eliminate friction? You know what? It, it was it was an amazing discovery that it it really could be solved and it's not a very complex solution. The solution is to authorize people who buy their you know job title and the role in the company are expected to do certain things that are privileged, right? So authorize them. And instead of making them ask every time to give them access to a, let's say, a domain admin credential in a bowl, can we just let them go and do what they, they mean to do every day? And things are a little bit different. That was an example of a legacy PAM use case like domain admin. But when you switch to the DevOps world and you switch to infrastructure's code, it's a lot of di different things uh, you know, for infrastructure services, a lot of access credentials and so on authorize them properly, validate when they're actually asking for that, and let them go and do what they are supposed to do. And 
if they need to automate all these things, allow them to use the tooling for that, right? And it was that kind of, you know, all of a sudden trying to, uh, all of a sudden seeing how we've found the solution. And it's very simple, you can authorize it. And while you also provide that access, you don't keep it there 24 by seven by 365 because nobody uses it yeah. that, you know, like that. So that was a simple kind of this um, discovery moment that helped us move forward. Was also sorry, Sean. It was also yeah. a technology that at that point allowed you to do that, or it was just the thinking that was wrong. You know, sometimes you need the the convergence of the idea mm -hmm. and the technology mm -hmm. available to do so. Yeah, a super important point, right? Yeah, I, again, I'm sure there were a lot of smart people before us thinking along the same lines, but it wasn't done. It wasn't built. And I think if you go back even ten years, I think it'd be very challenging because you didn't have the maturity of this different technologies, especially cloud native technologies, right? So yes, it's a, it's a big uh, factor of the combine a combination of the idea and the timing and the uh, technology uh, maturity to be able to do that. Well, I always go back to operational maturity as well. And part of that's driven by the technology. So moving from on-prem and I'll, I'll call them static, uh, static identities, right? You get onboarded when you join, you might change roles. So some things might get tweaked. And then when you fight, when you leave, hopefully they, they uh, remove the, <laughs> the identity and the access, but it's it fairly, yes. <laughs> but fairly contained. But when you, when you move into the, to the uh, DevOps and infra and inf infrastructure as code and, and you're building multiple times a day and, and loads of people are involved, some teams at some time, other teams at other customers and all these things come into play. Uh, it's a very dynamic world. So clearly scale is important, but also the speed at which you have to manage this stuff. So you can't, you can't put the burden on one team or another to handle the speed at which all these things are coming at them. So you have to, you have to take that into account, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, to give you uh, an example from very early um, stages of our product development, this was even before the product was GA and a, a big enterprise uh, company was testing it in the pre GA stage. And their first use case was uh, um, we need the API functionality to do everything that we can do from the console, the web UI. Uh, candidly, um, we built the product uh, as API first, but uh, a lot of what we had actually from the APIs wasn't even documented at the time. So, so when they started actually doing it uh, from the API and uh, and made us document everything and be very diligent about like what we're building and uh, you know what's available through APIs, it made us really think that this is going to be a huge differentiator for a technology like this. Yeah, APIs are. are I think there's a term like APIs is a new UI, right? I think it's very true for our product. Essentially, a lot of that automation and oper operationalization constraints of products are come down to that. Can how much can be automated uh, for ongoing, you know, um, maintenance and administration of any product? Wow, interesting. And you know what is great is that you too are going to get to go deeper in this conversation in a couple of days. When it, we it's hard to stop that. now, but I will. Well, and, uh, that's we'll, why we'll I have, stepped we'll in. Chat. <laughs> that's why I have to step in, because I know you would not stop, Sean. And uh, I, I just want to give uh, the opportunity here to to Art. To, I know you guys uh, are going to be a black hat. Uh, you can meet with people, network. So how are you going to do that? How can people get in touch with you? And of course, I invite everybody to to do that and to follow the next conversation that uh, Sean and Art are going to have a blackout and I'm going to be the one with the camera and uh, recording that. So I'll be <laughs> there, right. but not not in the in the shot. So how, how can people get in touch with you and, and network there? Yeah, and, um, LinkedIn is uh, probably the best. I'm always active on LinkedIn. Um, Certainly, yeah. Uh, hit me up on LinkedIn, direct message, whatever works, and love to to talk. 
Very cool. We'll be sure to put this into in the notes here and uh, with the website and everything that people need to know about uh, about what you do. Uh, Sean, final word. No questions. Yep. Just No questions? Word. Well, <laughs> no, I think uh, what I'm excited for and is some use cases and some stories of how some of these challenges that you saw and you built for are actually overcome uh, for some of your some of your customers and, and the ultimate outcomes that they've experienced because they're fortunate enough to find you and the bride of team. So I'm looking forward to that this week and uh, excited to share that with everybody. And yeah, definitely connect with Art on LinkedIn. Uh, find him around uh, around uh, the Mandalay Bay and uh, have a chat with him. And if you need help finding him, you can find me, and I'll uh, I'll put you in contact for sure. But uh, no, love what you're doing, Art, and uh, thrilled to have you on. And uh, excited to see you this week, and and continue the uh, the bride of story. Absolutely, thank you, Sean, Marco, thank you. It's a pleasure. And everybody and, else, stay yep, tuned for stay more tuned. conversation. Definitely watch uh, the the upcoming one if you haven't, and if you have, and this is the second one that you see with art good we we want you to read and listen and view all the stories we share with bright type so yep. take yep. care bri dot com there we go see you all there <laughs>